Well, the calendar does say October, so apparently I should review at least one horror film, right? Halloween 2018 brings back Laurie Strode and Michael Myers from the original 1978 Halloween, throws away all the previous sequels in favor of a tale set 40 years later when the pure evil killing machine finds a way to torment Jamie Lee Curtis all over again. Is this cat and mouse relationship worth revisiting again? Well, here's five things you might want to know about the new Halloween. Oh boy. I am not looking forward to this one. Um, I'm not a horror guy. You knew that, right? Like, those aren't my kind of movies. Let's just start there. I think this will inform the rest of the review for you, whether you're a horror person or not a horror person. So we'll give this a yellow. I hate horror movies, like old school slasher flicks. I didn't even get them then, even growing up in the 80s. My friends were talking about Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and the Halloween movies, and I'm just going, why? What is so appealing about being frightened? That is not a great experience. Or, you know, gory violence. I didn't understand the attraction of that. It seems debased to me in a lot of ways. It did then, it still does now. So I don't understand it. Now, if you do, if you do get it, first of all, let's have a conversation. Explain it to me because I still don't understand. But if you do get it, then I think this might be okay. But if you're not a horror film lover, it's not. It's, it's nostalgia for something that I am not nostalgic for. And that's going to inform the rest of my review. So before we get into me talking about why I don't like it, let's talk about why you might like it or what there is here to like. I think technically this is a well-made film. That's how it's different to me than those old slasher films in the 80s. It's actually a well-made film. Jamie Lee Curtis is giving a great performance. Um, there are other good performances around her as well. Technically, the film is doing interesting things. Here's what I will say about the original Halloween in 1978. That's actually a decently made film too. There's some creativity with some of the film shots, what they're doing, I get that. And also the way this movie plays homage to that movie and also flips some things on their head is the only interesting thing I found in this movie. Unfortunately for me, it's only a couple moments and a couple seconds and they're spoilers so I can't really tell you. But I did recognize that technically there were a few things going on here, at least to appreciate. And we've arrived at the part of the review that uh, if you're a horror fan, you probably should just turn it off. Just turn the review off now. No, I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. And we can go on being friends because I may say some things that are going to offend you. And I promise it's no judgment on you. It really isn't. It's just me. I don't get this stuff. Uh, let's start with what's going on here in the script. This is just the same old horror nonsense of plot point to plot point, killers trying to kill people and people trying to be killed or trying to stop the killer and oh cool, there's a bloody shot and oh cool, there's a gory moment. And it's just, it, it feels so blah, 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 fill in the blanks to me, paint by numbers. I don't understand what's new here. Um, I really believe this is pure nostalgia. And what I mean by that is it is playing moments for the people who love those moments. And when something is pure nostalgia, but it's something that I don't think there should be nostalgia for in the first place, how am I supposed to connect to that? Here's the other thing that starts to get frustrating to me. Um, I feel like these kind of movies are just empty. There's nothing interesting or meaningful about them. Uh, and then when I say these kind of movies, I mean pure slasher flicks where they don't have something really interesting to say. Now, I've heard the idea, the horror metaphor of going through trauma and it's about battling our demons, but that's every horror movie, right? Like what makes this one interesting or different or gives me something to think about? There isn't. It's just the same old thing I've heard before. And for me, I need something like that. Look, if you want a movie about what, what it means to go through trauma, First Man is in theaters. That is a movie about what it means to process actual, authentic, real trauma. Not this nonsense of this heightened world where there's a serial killer after you. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not something I can identify with in any way whatsoever. And because of that, it just doesn't feel like there's anything here. And here's the final negative I have, and this is specifically about this franchise. Michael Myers is boring. And you will not be able to convince me any differently. What 
I, like, there's nothing behind this serial killer. We don't understand anything about him. The movie goes to great pains to hide any kind of facial expression or any kind of understanding of why he does what he does. He's just pure evil. Well, guess what? That's boring. Not only are his motivations boring, the way he goes about killing people is boring. He's slow. He's basically just a zombie who walks. He finds a knife, he slices somebody up. Like, there's nothing interesting about even this villain. And if you're gonna have a horror movie, shouldn't you at least have an interesting villain? Uh, Michael Myers, it absolutely floors me that people find him scary. I don't find any of this scary. I find it ridiculous. Uh, overall, I did not enjoy myself, if you can't tell. If you're a horror fan and you love the movie uh, before, I'm sure you're probably gonna have a good time with this, but I gotta be honest about how I feel, I just don't get it, and it would be dishonest for me to give it anything higher than a C minus. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll get to the best ever challenge here in a bit. By the way, I hate giving reviews like that. I love loving things, and I did not have a good time here. Um, before we get to the best ever challenge, though, let's hang out further. Maybe there's, there's a way to have this discussion even further about horror movies and why you enjoy them or don't enjoy them, what you agree with, disagree with. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. -E we can hang out there. Uh, also listen to the podcast, Sif Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. -P. Um, just search for it wherever you listen to your podcast. I'm sure you'll find it. We have a great conversation every week about movies, television, all sorts of pop culture fun stuff. Uh, interact here on YouTube, leave comments, take a guess at the best ever challenge, uh, all that kind of stuff. Hit the little alert bell if you like the videos because that way you will be notified every single time a new video shows up. So if you're really interested, um, make sure you do that. And then thank you for supporting at Patreon. Patreon.com slash your movie friend means a lot to me. Starts at three bucks a month. And thank you so much for keeping this thing going. I could not do it without you. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Try to identify my choice. Um, let's, let's, do, let's talk about horror movies that non-horror people can like. There are movies in that genre that I have given good grades to, and, and there are different reasons for that. But I want to hear your best ever horror movie for a non-horror fan. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the one that is probably Elaine from Seinfeld's favorite. Take a guess at mine in the comments. First person to get it right uh, does get a point. And as always, I'll give you a few extra seconds to hit subscribe. It just click my face.